Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about my favorite paints the ones I'm most likely to put on the desk and more importantly to actually use on a miniature. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. So stuff. one thing is for sure I love paints. I probably have about 1600 bottles of paint in my office Probably about 1,200 of them are on the walls around me at all points in time. To say I have an addiction to trying different paints and using a bunch of different paint is perhaps an understatement. Now, that being said, we all know that no matter how many paints you have, whether it's 10 or 1,000, there are always a few paints that rise to the top, that end up being your go-tos, that are things you love because of their properties, their color, their tone, the way, they, the, way, the way they actually resolve on the miniature. Whatever it is, there are certain paints that we just love. And so today, I'm going to take you through my favorite paints. And we're going to do that by sort of category, or at least categories as I see them. And these are just paints that I really like, and maybe you might like to. Right up top, let's start with brand. So this is broad. Uh, writ large, there are three paint brands that I favor. Those are Proacryl, uh, Proacryl from Monument Hobbies, which is excellent. Uh, love it. Now, obviously, I do have an affiliate operation with them, and I have paints uh, that I've made with them, but they are regularly part of basically every miniature I paint, as you'll see in many of my videos and beyond. Brand number two is the Army Painter, their new Fanatic line. So that is to say the, the improved new line of Army Painter paints. Uh, that Fanatic line really corrected all of the problems that used to be there with old Army Painter, which I did not like at all and would not recommend. Uh, but the new stuff is fantastic. It is a regular part of what I paint with. I really enjoy using them. I like how thick they are. I like how creamy they are. Uh, and I like how they paint. Lastly is AK Interactive 3rd Gen. Now, uh, this paint is really, I think, just a modern take on what was the classic Vallejo, which always was a mainstay in my line when I started, um, but they're just sort of more densely pigmented and easier to work with, I find, no matter the thickness you're aiming to resolve. So those are my three uh, favorite paint brands that I keep uh, sort of at hand at all times. But there are other ones that I'll sometimes use as well, as we'll see when we get into specifics. All right, with the specifics done, I think it's time to get into our categories and talk about some specific paints. So first off is skin tones. Now, there's a lot of different skin tone paints that I end up using, but and this actually will cover all three of my previously stated brands. Um, whether it's darker tones to begin with your base layering, highlights uh, or things like that, all of these paints I use. And I love painting skin, so there's a wide range of paints I will often use. Uh, so whether it's Army Painter and their Fur Brown, or the Shadow Flesh uh, from Pro Acryl, these two paints really jump out at me as sort of a way to start. Layering up, there's lots of good choices amongst both Pro Acryl and Army Painter that I'm often using. And uh, including these like more pinky tones and stuff like that. Uh, these paints you see here, I really do enjoy a lot. Now, one of the keys to make these very pink skin tones work, and there's several in both ranges, as you can see, that fit into this category, is a good green color. What? For skin? Just trust me. Uh, the pink tones get offset by the green to produce a nice neutral sort of Caucasian skin tone if that's what you're going for. So both green gray from AK 3rd Gen uh, as well as faded green from uh, Pro Acryl are usually part of my recipe uh, at the end as I start mixing it in to both cool and contrast the pink and build myself towards a more naturalistic flesh tone. I really like all of these different paints. Now, if you're going for darker skin tones, then there's also a series of browns that I really love. So if you're trying to go for more African skin tone, you can work in a lot of the darker skin tones I talked about. So the Shadow Flesh or anything like that still certainly works. But then I really like 
uh, Warm Brown from Pro Acryl, as well as a couple of these other browns from Army Painter that you see here. Uh, they just serve really well to build up those uh, skin tones uh, into sort of more African, darker skin colors. The highlights for those are going to end up being the same highlights. I'll usually end up using a more pale flesh tone uh, to, or, or maybe something with a little yellow influence, but it's a little more rare, uh, to then build up the highlights in those uh, darker skin tones. So with that, we've got the whole panoply of skin tones covered. I can do everything I want to lay down my base skin tone. But of course, that's not all. I'm also a fan of filtering and toning skin adding additional color and visual interest to it. And these four speed paints from Army Painter Speed Paint 2.0 are perfect for that. If you've seen me paint display quality skin, and I've done several videos on it, you'll know I often use the airbrush at the end and thin this speed paint down to create uh, these sorts of very thin filters over the skin. It both can hide a little bit of your previous blending sins, but importantly, it adds the subtle richness and hue uh, to your skin that really makes them more visually compelling. This really adds a lot of the yellow tones, the red tones, and the purples to the shadows. So I really like all four of these. Uh, these are my go-tos when it comes to uh, the paints I use for painting skin on miniatures. And that is my favorite thing to paint. I paint a lot of it. All right, next up, let's talk universal highlights and shadows. So I generally do mixes for my highlights and shadows. I'm not one to just use the next step up. If I need a lighter blue, I don't just grab light blue. I actually think that's mostly wrong. It makes your figures look not credible in the light is the problem because they look like they're in different types of lights as you pick a war warmer or colder highlight color for each individual tone. So I've never been a fan of triads. But in the universal highlight category, this bright pale yellow or traditional ice yellow, uh, the first one being from Pro Acryl, the second one being from um, uh, AK 3rd Gen, um, but lots of people make ice yellow, but these are the two I really, really enjoy. Now, when I need colder tones, uh, I will oftentimes go for something like, a, uh, like this uh, very white blue uh, from my own uh, Pro Acryl line from my specialty line. Uh, and I find that that is really the perfect highlight color when you want that cold highlight. You want to show somebody in a cold environment, cold light, etc. My other go-to for highlight tones, and I actually use all of these in place of the in place of white. That is to say, everything here is used in place of white. I almost basically never use dead white. Uh, my other go-tos are the pastels from AK 3rd Gen. I do really like this entire set. There is a pastel purple, blue, green, pink, and peach, and so on. And frankly, all of them get used by me. Uh, I use the pastel peach sometimes, uh, mixing it into skin tones to add a little vibrancy, so the previous mixes I talked about. Um, I use it to highlight red and then put red glazes over it to make the red really kick and pop. Um, I use it as the highest highlight in colors like purple and then glaze the purple over it to get a beautiful satin sheen. Unbelievably useful, these pastel tones, either as your highest highlight uh, or as just a replacement for white. So anytime you are going to use white, you go to the pastel green, blue, purple. I know it looks weird in the bottle. You're like, there's no way this isn't even close to white. But as you put it in the miniature as your highest value paint, it will basically look white to your eyes. More proof of why you shouldn't trust the bottle or need to worry about exact matches. Your eyes do the work for you and really create the image in your mind based on the entire thing and what paints are near it, not what the thing looks like alone in the paint bottle. On the universal shadow side, obviously I have a set of tones that I'm a fan of, starting off with, of course, Payne's Gray from my specialty set. Uh, this was a paint that I worked hard to design with Jason from Monument. Um, this Pro Acryl paint I find unbelievably valuable. I use it all the time. Uh, for, you know, my universal shadows uh, to do the darkest colors on, again, skin or cloth or basically anything I mentioned there, right? Um, it just, as a universal shadow color, it more or less works on everything. I even use it on metallic paints for my shadow often. It's just an incredibly useful color. Now, uh, also on the side, if I want something warmer, 
Uh, we have this really beautiful, like, dark red, almost crimson tone from Pro Acryl. That's great when you want warm shadows, so if you have very cold highlights, this can be great to mix into your shadows there. Uh, so, again, on the, the warm side. Um, AK 3rd Gen does make Anthracite, which is a, or whatever it's called, I don't know how you say that word, but I, I think that's what it's called. Um, it's this sort of very, very dark blue. I like that one a lot as well, and will often use that to bridge in between Payne's Gray and the other tones if I want. Uh, through glazes. And then finally, sometimes you do just need something that's black or almost black. And my particular favorite right now is a color called Tenebrous Gray from AK 3rd Gen. This actually is a hyper dark black purple. And so because of that, it's a little softer than traditional black. It doesn't, it has still a little bit of chromatic uh, uh, hue to it. Like that purple does a lot of work, especially if you spread it out real thin, you'll see the color. Uh, but I really love using this as like my shadow tone for metals, uh, as a shadow tone on red. It really, really works so well. Like if you've got a bright red cloak and you want to capture those shadows, this is the perfect choice because it, uh, because it has that slight purple tone in it, it just feels very naturalistic on the red while still creating a dark enough shadow that you're in the right place. So overall, that's my universal highlights and shadows. Uh, love all of these. All right, next up, let's do a little rotation of some bright colors. First up, fluorescence. There are really two fluorescent sets that I tend to use um, anytime I need to use fluorescence, which is a more, uh, you would think that would be more rarefied, but I paint a lot of glowing things, so it, it gets used a lot. Um, plus, fluorescents are really good for making certain colors like red really pop. So, uh, and I, you'll see that happen in videos where I lay down the, um, the fluorescent tone and then glaze the color over top a lot. At any rate, Golden High Flow is uh, really, for my money, one of the best fluorescents on the market. The bottles are big, they're not that expensive, they're made more for traditional artists, but they work excellent in our craft as well. In the traditional miniature line, the only fluorescent that I really like is the stuff from Pro Acryl. Their fluorescent range is quite excellent. Um, it's thicker. The Golden Line is very thin, very inky. This is a little thicker, so you can kind of place it and push it around on the miniature, which has a value. So it kind of depends on what I'm looking for in it. Like if I want to work through the airbrush, then more or less my go-to is the Golden High Flow. If I'm looking to just place some very small paint uh, with the brush, I'll often go to Pro Acryl. So it's more of just like, what am I trying to do? will end up deciding which paint I use. Now, we can't talk about bright colors in my world without talking about turquoise and magenta. I'm not going to go through every color in the rainbow completely, although I'll talk about many of them. Um, but turquoise and magenta are two colors I am very well known for. And this selection of turquoises you see in front of you is often what I like to work with. The new Army Painter turquoises I really do enjoy. I think they're, they're pretty great. Um, but also this new turquoise from Rogue Hobbies line in Pro Acryl is also really wonderful. Generally, I'll end up using these, all of these colors, often for things like verdigris on copper, or as well just doing, you know, bright turquoise cloaks and other things like that. This range really gives me something nice to work with, though I'll often combine it with the previously mentioned universal highlights and shadows. On the magenta side, there's quite a range. Again, starting with the dark magenta from Pro Acryl, uh, once again from Rogue Hobbies line, uh, which is great. That whole that whole line is just really good. Um, Louise made just an incredible selection of six paints that I really, really enjoy. Um, that is often what I'll use as sort of a base um, to lay down, or maybe it'll go over some kind of like one of the aforementioned dark flesh tones, uh, depending on kind of what I'm painting and what's going on. But that's usually a good base, and this is one of the few places I still use my Chimera paints. Um, the Chimera Magenta is really good, but also a new competitor has entered the fray in the Atom Paints Magenta. I really like this Atom Paints Magenta. It's a really nice color. Um, magenta tends to have a very distinct pigment that it uses, and so most of these paints are actually using the same pigment. It's just a question of the rest of their additives and mix as to how I like it. Now, also, there are pinks that, that are higher up in the range, like the old rose you see here, that I will often mix in for highlights in the magenta. So I'll, I'll kind of, this is a good additive color in there to get some brighter magenta before I eventually go to the universal highlight colors of the ice blue, or sorry, the, yeah, the ice blue, the ice yellow, and so on and so forth. 
uh, to then get my highest highlights on my magenta tones. But with this little selection, you really have kind of everything you need in the bright tones. Another color that I'm often painting a lot of these days, especially as I'm working on my Skaven army, is reds. And red is classically a very challenging color for people um, because they try to paint it over black and that doesn't work. Uh, it just doesn't. Red is something that is highly translucent and very much shows the tone and the value that's underneath it. So for me, the, I start with red all the time as burnt red. Um, this burnt red from Pro Acryl is absolutely my go-to. It replaced old whole red from several other lines I used to use. Um, I love it. It covers well. It lays down what I want. It gives me a good solid red tone as a base. It's everything I'm looking to have in a red tone, and I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Um, from there, I'm building up into brighter, more intense reds. And there's a couple that I will often go to. One of my new favorites is this Atom Red, but I'll also sometimes use things like the Golden So Flat Pyrrole Red, obviously using a pyrrole pigment, as opposed to a... Uh, uh, there's, there's several different red pigments. Some lean more pink, some lean more orange, and so on. But I tend to like the pyrrole. It just kind of has the vibrancy that I enjoy. Uh, and the this Atom Paint is just really, really, really intense. I love it for getting those bright reds. This is what I use in my Skaven army in conjunction with the aforementioned uh, pastel peach to lay down the highlight, the fluorescent orange to create the glow, and then this atom red over the top to create the glaze and make those really pop and pop and pop and reds. You see, for example, here in these the, the picture of these Skaven that I have uh, painted. That was what I finished up some time back. So that's the sort of sequence and the way I like to, to sort of work with my reds. One last color I want to mention here is purple, but specifically more on the violet side. I really like violet more than I like purple. Like if I'm going to get red purple or uh, uh, yeah, like sort of a, a purple with reddish influence, I traditionally just will use some kind of magenta. But violet, the cooler side, the purple with a blue influence, generally a lot of people haven't made very good paints in that range. I'll be honest. Um, you know, for a while I would use some of the Vallejo paints, but I've just been really sad. Um, I even went out a long time ago and bought the Nocturna set. I think I have a review of that very old on the channel. And I just really didn't like those paints very much. They were hard to work with, but they were just the only people around making a full set of that violet range. Happily, that is no longer the case. Army Painter in their new uh, line has a wonderful six set of violets that I really like, especially the darkest purple you see here. Um, that super dark purple is great. So oftentimes I want that really dark purple blue um, as like sort of the shadow tone or base tone uh, of, of work. And this actually nails it perfectly. It's on my palette a lot. Um, whenever I'm sort of touching purple, this is often my go-to first paint. And then I'll pick something else from the range to kind of integrate in. And then from there, it's into the universal highlights, the ice blues, the pastels, uh, anything like that, depending on the temperature that I want to achieve. Sometimes even, as I mentioned, pastel peach or those kind of skin tones if I want sort of the warm highlight and the cold shadows. This actually achieves that since that base uh, uh, terrestrial purple tone is really cold. So that's great. Uh, all in all, that's most of the hues. Again, like when it comes to yellows, there's quite a different selection of yellows and oranges I use stuff like that. I'm not really going to go into those too much. I don't paint a lot of yellow, um, and there's a lot of different yellows that you could use. Contrast paint yellows are fine. Um, there's plenty of Pro Acryl ochres that are fine. Really, the key with yellow has very little to do with the paint and almost everything to do with what's underneath it. So having a good undershade where you run from uh, brown or reds or pinks, salmons, up to uh, white, uh, but then having that pink in the mix is what gives you a good yellow tone any more than one individual paint. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's sort of my run of normal matte paints that are often on my palette. But it's also worth mentioning here, uh, I think one last thing, and that is what actual whites, white paints do I use? I talked a little bit about the darker colors in Tenebris Gray to replace black, but I haven't mentioned actual white tones or off-white tones because sometimes you do want something in the off-white space as opposed to a little more chromatic hue influenced. For me, that's this selection. 
Um, red gray, both Pro Acryl and AK third gen make an excellent red gray, is usually my starting point. Um, I really like buff from AK third gen as sort of my bone color that's very warm, but this dark bone from Pro Acryl is also quite excellent. The highest highlight I usually ever go to is sort of ivory or bright ivory. Pro Acryl is well known for having some of the best white or near white paints on the market, and they're just frankly usually my go-to, have been for quite a long time. So bright ivory, ivory, bone, all of those things in Pro Acryl I like. Um, but I do also like the AK 3rd Gen Ivory. It's also quite nice. So if those are more available in your area, frankly, it's almost six of one, half a dozen of another. They're slightly different values, but it in the end, it doesn't make much difference in your painting. Both of these ranges have um, some solid whites, though I would absolutely put Pro Acryl still as the king of sort of white paints on the market, especially these near whites. The Ivory, Bright Ivory, Bone, all of those things are... Uh, wonderful in how they apply. And they, there's the newest challenger here, which is this heavy warm white, which came out of um, Matt Sexwish and, and Ben Comet sets. And honestly, I've come to really love this. It's very thick. It's almost more like a heavy body acrylic. And so it's really interesting how you can kind of place a little glob of it and spread it around on the miniature to get a nice feathering effect with it. Um, it does handle a lot of the traditional chalkiness problems with whites. And... Uh, so that's kind of replaced some of the other heavy body acrylics I would often use uh, in, in whenever I need a white tone. So pretty cool. Lastly, let's go out on metallics. That's right. The one, the only metallics that I normally use, Vallejo Metal Color. Um, it just is what it is. They are still the best. Their new formula, new, new formula, they've relaunched again. Uh, they had a period during the pandemic where they had things labeled new formula, and frankly, it didn't really work. They separated super fast because they had to use a replacement for the alcohol that they used because that alcohol became scarce during the pandemic. But they've now relaunched with a better formula, much closer to the old formula. And I'm back and I'm in love again. Here we are. Uh, it's perfect. It's liquidy. It uh, shoots to an airbrush fine, works on the brush. The thing I always hear people say is, it's too liquid. I place it and it flows everywhere. Folks, you can't just dip in the paint and paint with this stuff. You should never do that anyways. Like, you should be good. But as always, you need to dip into the paint and then wick out the liquid onto a paper towel. Once you do that and get rid of the excess liquid, it's then going to apply smooth as butter, opaque as all get out, easy to stipple with, to fade, to blend, to glaze. You can do everything with Vallejo Metal Color, brush or airbrush, except no substitutions when it comes to steel paints. Now, of course, with golds, well, the gold and the copper are a problem. I will still use my gold mix. That is still what I use. Video linked up above, so check that out. I won't go into great detail here. I have to mix my own gold. But one new interesting competitor is this brand newest offering from Pro Acryl, this sort of dark bronze. Um, I really like this paint. I didn't think I was going to, but I actually really do. It's one of the first metallics out of their range that really impressed me. I'm hoping to see more like this from Pro Acryl in the future um, because this is, has better opacity. It isn't quite as sparkly. Um, it spreads better and, and reflects better. So uh, I think probably Ben and Matt worked to get this exact tone, to get the quality of this paint. And honestly, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I look forward to seeing what Pro Acryl does in the future with metallics as I think they've got a good... They're, they're on an upward trajectory, so hopefully we can actually get a competitor here to Vallejo Metal Color, maybe even in the steel ranges. There you go. That's a lot of paints. That's everything that I favor and tends to be on my desk. Of course, there's lots of other paints that will tend to be around and I'll utilize. Um, but if you've got questions about a color or a range or something like that I didn't touch on, drop those down in the comments below. I always answer every question asked. If you uh, want to support the channel, first of all, we really appreciate that. Hit like, hit subscribe. All those things are free and it's, it helps get this video in front of other people. Uh, if you want to support the channel and actually spend some money, no problem. There are affiliate links down below. In fact, for some of the, to pick up some of the paints I've talked about today, doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, often saves you money. There's also uh, the books that Uncle Adam and I do if you're looking for a new game. 
uh, we, we make skirmish games. Those are all linked down below. And of course, there is our Patreon, focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.